Sam Smyers here. Today I want to talk about the FabFilter Pro L2. This is a pretty intuitive limiter plugin and has a lot of features under the hood and knowing how to properly use all these features can really help you get the best results when you're limiting your tracks. So let's get into it. At the top of the plugin, we have the presets. I'm gonna leave it at the default setting. Then we have the help button. If I have the show interactive help hints menu option selected, then whenever I hover over a button, it will show me helpful information about that button, as we can see here. The next button with the lock on it will lock your gain and output settings so that if you change presets, you won't have to continually adjust your gain and output settings. So by default, it's turned on, so we'll just leave that on. Here we have the resize, so we can make this window smaller or larger. I'll leave it on medium. On the side of the plugin is the gain slider. Raises up to make your track louder. So the maximum output level is set in the bottom bar over here. If I am using the Pro L2 on my master, I like to set the output to negative 0.1 or even negative 0.2 dB, just to make sure that if any peaks make it past the limiter, they won't go above 0 dB and distort. This usually isn't an issue though, because if you activate this true peak limiting, this means that the true peak output is not going to exceed the output level. If you don't have this selected, there's a chance that some peaks in your audio will make it past the limiter and go above the output level, potentially causing distortion if it goes above 0 dB. So I always recommend using the true peak limiting on your master because of this. Oversampling sets the amount of oversampling, which reduces aliasing and intersample peaks. If you're using a lot of limiting, so you have a lot of this gain slider turned up, which I do, then you will want to turn on oversampling. That filter recommends using between four times and eight times. The other options, 16 times and 32 times, will probably destroy your CPU usage and may not make that much of a difference in the sound. So FabFilter doesn't really recommend you going this high. So I'm gonna select four times. Next we have Dither. If you want to use Dithering, you can turn this on. Generally, you would only want to use dithering if this limiter is the last thing that touches your master, and only if you're going from a higher bit depth to a lower bit depth. For example, if you are working in 24-bit and are bouncing down to 16-bit, then you want to use dithering to reduce distortion that could occur from going from a higher bit depth to a lower bit depth. I usually work in 24-bit, and I bounce down my masters at 24-bit, so I don't have a need for this, so I'll just leave dithering off. Here we have the advanced settings. The advanced settings let you customize the limiting styles. The default setting is modern, so I usually just leave it at modern. If you want to customize the style more, you can scroll through these other options and see how they change your mix. Transparent can be good for rock or pop music. Punchy is the least transparent and gives you a pumping sound. Dynamic is great on rock music. All around is good for just about everything. Aggressive is good for EDM. Modern is the default style. Bus is good for bus processing. If you put this limiter on a drum bus, it's great for that. And then you have safe, which gives you no distortion whatsoever. So this is good for acoustic music. Next, we have the look ahead. A short look ahead time will preserve transients better and increase loudness at the expense of possible distortion. Longer look ahead times are safer, but less loud and not as great for preserving transients. I'll just leave this alone for now. Next, we have the attack and release. So in general, short attack times and long release times are safer and cleaner, but they can cause that pumping effect. On the other hand, long attack times and short release times can increase apparent loudness and presence at the expense of possible distortion. So next we have channel linking. I'm not sure when I would need to use this, but basically when you are limiting a stereo signal, you generally want to process both channels the same way. If for some reason you have a short peak in one channel, so you have a peak in the right channel and not the left channel, you can remove it in only the channel where it occurs. So you can change this behavior with these channel linking knobs. If this is the case where you have a peak in one channel and not the the other, then FatFilter suggests choosing less than 100% for this transients knob and then starting at 100% for this release knob and then decreasing it or changing it up or down depending on how it affects your sound. So once again, I wouldn't really get bogged down with these knobs and I would just leave them alone. Over on the right hand side, we have the metering. The first button is TP for true peak metering. If you have true peak limiting activated, then you'll want to have true peak metering activated so that you can read the maximum peaks of your audio. Let me show you how this works. If I turn off True Peak Limiting, then True Peak Metering is going to show us that there are peaks going above the output level. See, it's in the red. 
if I turn this off, it's not going to show us any of the true peaks. So we are going to want to activate true peak limiting to make sure that there are no peaks going above the output level and then also activate true peak metering so that we can make sure that true peak limiting is working. Here we have the real time level display settings. First is slow down, which lets the display move slowly so you can easily follow the level and the peak gain reduction labels. Once the incoming audio reaches the right hand display edge, the display quickly scrolls back to make room for new audio. So I'll show you how that works. So see how it shifts quickly like that. Next, we have fast, which moves the display fast. Slow moves the display slow. And infinite shows all incoming audio since the plugin was opened or this mode was selected. And of course we have off, which just turns the display off. This button is the meter scale button. Here are some normal scales, K system metering scales, and then loudness. I'm going to select loudness. And now this new section opens up. This shows us LUFS, which stands for loudness units full scale. This is the best way to measure loudness in my opinion. Here is a loudness meter target, negative 14. This is set for streaming. I can click on this streaming loudness meter target and then choose custom if I want to set my own target. I will leave that alone because I don't really use targets. The loudness timescale button at the bottom chooses which loudness timescale is displayed. Momentary for a continuously changing reading. Short term for a more slowly changing level. And integrated for long term measurements since the plugin was last reset, which we can reset by hitting this reset button. This red line is the loudness curve, which displays the overall loudness over time in this real-time display. The LRA represents the loudness range, which shows the variation of loudness over time. For example, the difference between the quiet parts of your song and the loudest parts of your song. Let's talk about some of the settings under the output knob. DC stands for filter DC offset, which we will ignore for now. Next is the sidechain triggering button. This is useful for stem mastering, where you have to deliver the stems with the same limiting as the master. So basically what you would do is you'd put the Pro L2 on the stem channel and feed the original unlimited master to the sidechain put on the stem channel. This you probably won't use very much, but it's good to know that this is there in case you need to use it. Next is the unity gain button, which allows you to listen to the effect of the limiting on the input signal. So this removes any gain that is added from the plugin and just lets you hear what effect that limiting is having on your original signal. Let's go ahead and hear how that sounds. Basically, you are listening to how the limiter is affecting your original signal without getting distracted by the increase in loudness. The headphones button is the addition limiting option, which basically additions the actual gain reduction that is being applied. So if I activate this, what we will hear are the parts of the song that are getting the most gain reduction applied to them. So as we see the gain reduction being applied, we can hear it more as I raise this gain slider up. Next to the output level knob is a bypass button, which you can turn on to bypass the entire plugin. There you have it. Those are some of the features of the FabFilter Pro L2. I hope that was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.